Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about solving inequalities. Specifically, we're looking at linear inequalities in one variable. I'm going to do a bunch of problems, and in each of the problems, I'll show you how to write the answer as an inequality, how to graph it on the real number line, and how to write the answer in interval notation. As a quick note, I want you to know we solve linear inequalities the same way we solve linear equations, except if you multiply or divide by a negative number, then the inequality reverses. That means greater than switches to less than, less than switches to greater than. Let's look at this really quick example. I have negative 2x is less than 10. To isolate the x, I need to divide by negative 2. So I'm going to divide the left side by negative 2. I divide the right side by negative 2. Because I'm dividing by a negative, I flip the inequality to greater than, then 10 over negative 2 gives me negative 5. So now we're ready to start with our regular examples. Our first one says x minus 6 is greater than or equal to negative 4. Because the inequality says subtract 6, I want to do the opposite, which would be add 6 to both sides. So I add 6 to the left, I add 6 to the right. Now I have x is greater than or equal to negative 4 plus 6 gives me a positive 2. Remember when you solved equations, you got one solution, but when you solve inequalities, you get infinitely many solutions. So our first way to write the answer is as an inequality, x is greater than or equal to 2. We can also graph that on a real number line. Because it says greater than or equal to, I know I have a solid dot at the 2, and then I'm going to shade to the right. So the highlighted portion, including that endpoint at 2, is my solution set. If I want to write this in interval notation, I'm going to start with the smallest answer, which is 2, and then I look for the largest answer, which goes to infinity. I know infinity always has an open parenthesis, and the 2, because I have a closed dot for greater than or equal to, will have a square bracket. Our next one says x plus 5 is less than 13. So we want to think of what's the opposite of adding 5, which would be subtracting 5. I subtract 5 from both sides to get x is less than 8. Now on my real number line, I put the number 8, and maybe a number or two on the right, then a couple of numbers on the left. Because it says less than 8, not less than or equal to, I use an open dot. And then I'm going to shade to the left because the arrow points to the left. My interval notation says start with the smallest number. So this is pointing to negative infinity. So I say negative infinity. And then I stop at my largest number 8. 8 is not included, so I use a parenthesis on both ends. Now we have negative 5x is less than 30. So I think about what's the opposite of multiplying by negative 5, and that will be to divide by negative 5. We have to remember, when we divide by negative 5, we are going to flip the sign of the numbers and we are going to flip our inequality. So the negative 5 cancels with the negative 5 and I just have x. The less than becomes greater than, 30 over negative 5 is negative 6. On the real number line, I put my negative 6 and then maybe a few more numbers. Negative numbers can be a little confusing in your head, so having this step of graphing can really help with the interval notation. I know I want an open circle at negative 6 to show it's strictly greater than, and then I want to shade to the right to show that the answers go to the right. Now I can go back to interval notation, which will go from negative 6 to infinity, and I'll have a parenthesis on both ends. In our next one, we have 8 times x is less than 24. It's important to notice that this time when I divide by a positive 8, I'm not going to change the sign of my inequality. I'm only changing when I multiply or divide by a negative number. So the 8 cancels, I have x is less than 3. We can put that on our number line, open circle at the 3, we shade to the left, then we write our answer as open parenthesis, negative infinity to positive 3, open parenthesis. Now that we've kind of got the hang of things that have one step, let's do multiple steps. Again, the idea is to collect like terms. We'll put the variables on the left, we'll put constants on the right, and at the end we want x to have a coefficient of 1. I'm going to start by moving the 6x over to the left, so I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. 4x minus 6x is negative 2x, and I have that that is less than 6. Now that the x is isolated, I want to divide by negative 2, but I need to remember, flip the sign. 
the negative 2 cancels, I have x less than becomes greater than 6 over negative 2 is negative 3. On my real number line, I'm going to place a negative 3, put an open circle, and then shade to the right to show my solution. When I write my answer in interval notation, I start at negative 3, I go to infinity, 2 open parentheses. Our next one says 9x plus 3 is less than or equal to 6x plus 5. So before we start moving things from left to right, I want to distribute the 6 to the x and to the 5. Now I have 9x plus 3 is less than or equal to 6x plus 30. I'm going to move the 3 from the left to the right by subtracting. This says 9x is less than or equal to 6x plus 27. Now I can move the 6x to the left. 9x minus 6x is 3x. This is less than or equal to 27. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Now I have x less than or equal to 9. Hopefully that felt like the same kind of steps we would have done if we solved an equation. The big difference is we had that less than or equal to where we normally would have an equal sign in an equation. Let's quickly draw a 9 on the number line. A solid dot is put in at 9. To show equality, I shade to the left, then I say this interval is negative infinity to 9. Then remember to put the square bracket to represent our closed dot, which allows equality at 9. When I have a fraction, I'm going to clear the fraction to make things easier. You could divide by the fraction, but it's going to be easier just to multiply both sides by 3. So I have a 3 on the left, I have a 3 on the right. 3 is positive, so I'm not flipping my inequality. The left side simplifies to x, the right side is greater than or equal to negative 12. On my number line, I place a number to be negative 12, I put a closed dot, then I'm going to shade to the right to show my solution set. Going back to interval notation, the closed dot is a square bracket, my smallest solution is negative 12, then it goes to positive infinity with a parenthesis.